Hello and welcome to week 12 of Bits and Bobs, where we outline this week's best Skyrim mods. And for today's first mod, we have Build Your Own Home. This well thought out unique mod allows you to build your own player home just how you like it, completely from scratch. To get started, you'll need to head to the home which can be found to the east of Whiterun. Once there, you'll see the ruined home and a workbench. Collect the deed on top of the workbench to make yourself the owner. And once you have that, head up the hill to collect the previous owner's plans for the house which contains all of the items needed to construct the different items for your home. Once you have both of those, you can click on the workbench to open the building menu, which is where you'll build everything from the actual home to the exterior and interior items. The changes made cost a bunch of different related items, with most taking firewood, steel ingots and iron ingots as base ingredients. The changes made over time are quite huge, from scaffolding to a farm to a full outside forge and even a watchtower. You can then even add a second level to your home, then a basement, then a secret lair, and then you can design each room with it with its own theme depending on what you prefer. In the video we're using the mage theme. Safe, I hope. Many other items can be built including a fishery, a fireplace, a combat area and more. You can even declare whether you're a supporter of the Imperials or the Stormcloaks. Altogether this makes it one of the most fun, extensive and rewarding mods to have been released as of yet. This next mod adds the Bow of Yorveth from The Witcher 2 into Skyrim. The bow and 6,000 arrows to go with it can be found in Bree's home in Whiterun. The bow and arrows are relatively strong, having slightly lower stats than their Daedric equivalents, so it stays low friendly. The style of the bow and arrows are definitely unique, having an intricate design along the centre of the bow. It's great to see a good looking bow mod come out, as they're quite rare and you generally see more melee weapon mods being released. We hope to see more that match up to this mod's high standards in the future. Next up we have the casual outfit, Oni edition. The mod adds a variety of standalone armour sets for females, including armour, boots and gloves. You can craft yourself a set at any forge and the colouring is done at a tanning rack. The mod offers seven different colours, including different variants of white, grey and black, as well as a red set and a blue set which looks similar to Lara Croft's outfit. The set also comes with three types of boots and gloves, white, black and brown, giving the player a huge variety of options for different outfits. Many of you like to see more race mods added to Skyrim, so the Orms Rart race mod is something you may appreciate. As you'd expect, the mod adds a new race to the game, in the style of a cat-like humanoid. The race comes in four varieties. Kitling, which uses the CBBE body and is short. Kitten, that uses the UNP body and is also short. Breed, which uses CBBE and is tall. And finally, the standard race, which uses the UNP body and is tall. The mod creator says the race is still a little too cat-like right now but the mod is still in beta so expect things to change on how the race looks in the future. We personally like the way the race looks right now, and we're glad to see more options than just Khajiit when it comes to cats in Skyrim. And now we have the automatic spells and increased spawns mod. Asis as it's otherwise known is a patch including increased spawns, automatic spells for NPCs, potions for NPCs and customizable AI. The mod allows for fully customizable spawn levels including all added mods without any compatibility issues, so you could run this alongside monster mod without any problems. The mod will also allow you to customise the skill requirement for certain spells, resulting in NPCs having the ability to use spells if they meet the requirements. The mod can be customised by editing each of the INI files inside of the mod's directory. So for example you could adjust the AI of certain NPCs, or NPCs that fall under the leveled list from the AI file. This next mod adds something we haven't really seen being focused on in Skyrim. More options for jewellery. The mod adds dozens of different earrings, lip piercings, nose piercings and even a pair of sunglasses to the game. Everything in the mod can be crafted at a forge, and each item comes with its own unique enchantment, so you can choose what set of jewellery fits your character best. There are more intricate pieces that are more suitable for women to wear, like large hoop earrings and pink sunglasses, and more simple sets for men to wear, including small ear studs, so both genders are included. While this isn't the most lore friendly mod out there, it's definitely interesting, and more choice for players in Skyrim is always a good thing. And now we have something you may have seen before, but a little more up to date and with a twist. The Dragon Killer Cart adds a drivable cart to the game which can be found just outside of Whiterun. First you'll need to craft yourself a harness and a saddle depending on which horse you have. You can then click on the cart to open the menu where you can give the harness to your horse, and then use the menu again to attach the horse to the cart. After the horse is attached you can then mount the cart and ride it around alone or with a follower. From the cart you have a few options. You can open the menu to turn the brakes off and on. You can open the cart and load it with items instead of holding the items in your own inventory. Or you can go into battle by sitting on your horse and ride it along with the cart attached so you can attack enemies whilst you travel. The mod has been well thought out and integrated well into the game, and it's a fun mod to play around with in the latest Skyrim update. Natalie is a follower that has a slight edge over most other followers that are released. She's a follower that will mainly focus on healing you, and she's highly skilled in the art of restoration. 
You'll find her in the Temple of Kinareth where she works as an apprentice. For now her fighting skills are limited and she only possesses a few destruction spells, which is why she'll mainly focus on healing. She'll pick the best type of healing spell based on how badly you're injured, how far away you are and how much magicka she has left, making her a really efficient follower. The mod creator recommends downloading the Ultimate Follower Overhaul Easy. and the No Health and Reduce Magicka Regeneration mods, so the game won't be too easily with Natalie healing you, and we agree, but it's great to see her heal a follower mod. Earlier last week you may have seen the hair packs from Fallout 3 mod. There's now a similar hair pack out but this time from the Oblivion game. The mod adds over 30 female and 10 male hairstyles to the game, which have all been slightly adjusted to fit better on characters in Skyrim. Just like the Fallout 3 pack, the only way without additional mods to change your hair on an already existing character is to use the console commands Show Race Menu and Set Player Race. If you do use that method then remember to back up any save files before trying. But other than that the hairstyles all seem great and the majority fit in well with the hairstyles from other hair mods and the vanilla hairs already in game. Next up we've got the Born Again Skyrim Steel Armour, a mod that replaces the whole steel armour set in Skyrim. The mod replaces the shield, helmet, cuirass, boots and gloves and also adds a second horned helmet. The new textures use the same resolution as the HD Skyrim DLC, so while being high res they'll work on any PC. As you can see the set is quite different compared to the vanilla steel set adding more fine details and giving more overall protection to the player, with the addition of things like shoulder pads on the main armour. It's definitely one of the better retexture mods out there. And now we have Smash Lock and Lock Doors. The mod allows you to smash your way through any lock in the game with your weapons, unless the lock requires a key. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like the unlocking mechanic already in game, or if you have a hard time unlocking certain locks, then this mod will allow you to smash your way through them with a percentage chance of success. The chance of success is determined based on your character's perk level of the weapon you're using to smash the locks with. So as you can see in the video, my perk is of a high level so it's relatively easy to smash my way through. As you hit the lock you'll get a notice in the top left corner telling you whether you've succeeded, failed or if you've broke the lock which then increases the difficulty of the lock. If you find smashing locks still to be too easy then you can try the hardcore variant of the mod which decreases the success rate and requires a high perk level in blunt weapons. Overall, the mod offers a great alternative that's still challenging without having to fiddle with any lockpicks. If you're not a fan of the vanilla jump animation and find it slightly apish, the YY Anim Replacer and Natural Jump for Skyrim mod could solve that problem. The mod aims to change the jump animation and give it a more realistic, non-exaggerated, law-friendly animation. The jump works when you're both holding a weapon and when you're not, but we think it really improves the animation when you're dual wielding, as the new animation is much more like what you'd expect in real life. It's definitely a huge improvement on the vanilla jump, and we can't see a reason not to download this mod. And that's it for this week's episode. Click on screen now to see our last spotlight, and leave any suggestions for future videos down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.